that they were just stopping just to sort of let you catch your breath. And then they were just going to come after a little bit more. And it was one little liberty taken, one little freedom taken, one little right taken uh, until you had none. Uh, and by the time they rolled out the vaccine passport, uh, I had enough. Uh, we had complied with every ridiculous mandate that they had put forth to us. You know, uh, close, open, close, open, mask, uh, plexiglass, move the tables away six feet apart. Just every ridiculous thing you could possibly imagine. When customers came in, they had to have masks. When they sat down, they could take them off. If they stood up to go to the washroom, they had to put them back on again. It was, it was, it was pure lunacy. Uh, and uh, when they uh, came out with the vaccine passport, um, I had looked at it as if that uh, this was the final straw for me. And uh, what this essentially meant is the next thing that they're going to do is literally take away my right to own and operate my business unless I consent to getting that uh, vaccine. Uh, and uh, by that point in the uh, pandemic, I knew that I was never going to take that vaccine. Well, and you definitely made the right choice not getting vaccinated uh, and, and not partaking in that scam. But between the vaccine passports coming out and, and these things being implemented, uh, how did that actually affect your business and lead to you getting shut down? It took two weeks. Uh, they implemented the vaccine passport on September 20th, and uh, I came out in opposition on, uh, of it on that exact day. Uh, and I was uh, very vocal in my uh, opposition to it. Uh, I thought that uh, I would... Uh, I thought that my 20 years in business, uh, that uh, my track record of, uh, of uh, charity and contribution to my community, uh, of, uh, of acceptance and inclusion of all, uh, that that would, uh, that would have some weight uh, and that I might be able to uh, inspire some other people to, uh, to speak out against it. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Uh, I came out on the 20th and uh, they shut us down on October 9th. So it took roughly, I guess, a little over two weeks for it to happen. So at first, uh, my statement on social media, uh, which was literally, uh, you know, a statement of pure love uh, and acceptance and uh, my belief that uh, all Canadians are equal, uh, was viciously attacked uh, by uh, uh, social media uh, influencers and uh, the public at large. Uh, when I look back on it now, I think that the uh, the hate that rolled down on me was, uh, was uh, you know, actual humans, but uh, also, you know, a lot of robotic hate, which uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't realize at the time. And uh, that caused uh, a lot of our neighbors and, uh, you know, uh, people in the city to, uh, to phone into police to phone into Alberta Health Services, uh, who then uh, sent, uh, uh, sorry, Alberta Health Services came in, checked to see whether we were open and uh, checking vaccine passports and, you know, uh, uh, showing the sign that says that we're going to check vaccine passports. I wasn't doing anything that resulted in my, uh, in all my licenses being rescinded and, uh, and taken away. So my liquor license, my food handling permit, my business license, uh, that in essence, uh, negated my lease as well. Uh, and, uh, by the time they came to close us on October 9th, they showed up with the, uh, sheriff, uh, the police escorted, uh, the sheriff and Alberta health services, who by this point in the uh, pandemic had, uh, essentially turned into the Gestapo and uh, they changed my, uh, they gave us two hours. And you paid for these licenses, right? Like, I mean, you actually paid the government, so they took away something that you, you paid for. I paid for all of them, yeah. I was just a giant free-range human on a, uh, on a giant tax farm. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we, pay, we paid everything. Uh, you know, hundreds, thousands of dollars, who knows how much it was for all of it. I mean, Canada, you need a permit to wipe your ass. So this is crazy. I mean, this is not uh, anything that, that you could be prepared for. This is not just getting fired from a job. We've all been there. This is actually taking away your ability to to not only get a new job but to even create one as an entrepreneur. This is all this has all been stripped from you, and your livelihood and your identity and your purpose are all are all completely obliterated in in a moment because you you tried to to do something that you believed was right. You got targeted. Uh, so so explain to me like like what what happens in a situation like this. This interview is absolutely crucial. And before we go any further on it, please stick around, but I've got to tell you something important. We only have so many years on this earth and it's so important that we make the most of them by not only maximizing our physical health, but also increasing our potential mental capacity. And you can do so by looking into nootropics, 
by Newtopia.com slash offensive. Now, right now, when you use my promo code offensive, you can get 25% off their entire store of the best nootropics that help you utilize the maximum capacity of your mind and unleash energy that you've never seen before. I highly recommend you checking out all of their products and choose, including their Xamner spray, which helps boost your energy. And I love their upbeat capsules. You take one of these in the morning, one of these in the afternoon. They have no weird side effects and jitters like coffee. They give you this boost of energy that you've never felt, but feels natural in the most surreal way and allows you to think. It's like Adderall, but without the jitters. It's like Adderall without the addiction. And of course, they have so many other products, including those if you're more of a nervous person and you feel like you have a heart that beats too fast, or you have nervous energy that'll actually give you a sort of well-being and a softness. This is backed by science, natural ingredients. And of course, there are all ingredients that you can recognize. They're not all these weird chemicals that you don't know. You've got to check out nootropics. If you don't even know what they are, I encourage you right now, go to nootopia.com, N-O-O-T-O-P-I-A.com slash offensive, O-F-F-E-N-S-I-V-E, and click the link in the description for 25% off right now during their Christmas sale. It's so important that you check this out. Do not wait until it's too late. Stop walking around tired, lethargic. If you need that afternoon coffee, don't drink all that caffeine that gets you jittery and makes you crash at the end. Check out Nootropics, which is a much better, effective, and clearer way to get the energy, the capacity, and the stamina that you need to get through your work day and to live with your family, even for stay-at-home moms. Nootopia.com slash offensive for 25% off. Click the link in the description and support them as they support the show. If you haven't already, make sure you grab those Nootropics. Nootopia.com slash offensive. Let's just jump right back into this interview. Now, this might be a little bit too much to ask. And I mean, if this is, you know, feel free to let me know. Um, you can make a note here to the producer. If we need to cut it, we can. We can. Uh, I don't want to invade your life, but I mean, I've got to understand the depth of what they've done to you. Uh, what What did this do to you financially? And like, where are you financially after the government targeted you like this? Yeah, they almost broke me, man. Um, I couldn't, I... I couldn't believe what happened. I, I couldn't believe that I lost what I loved because, because you know, I was doing the right thing. Uh, that I preached love and only received hate. It uh, broke me. It broke me for for a while. Um, yeah, and I, 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 I started to fight right away. Um, I started to fight like my life depended on it. Um, I held rallies. I joined rallies, and uh, I did everything I could to uh, to uh, defeat the oppression. Uh, and to uh, bring down the tyranny uh, and to try and make other people see what was going uh, and what was going to happen. Um, I, I, I fought like my life depended on it. You know, it's weird. Uh, so for 20 years, I've uh, collected taxes and paid taxes. Uh, in my estimation, uh, I've, uh, well, I don't really have an estimation, but I've paid millions of dollars in taxes, uh, unemployment insurance, uh, Canada pension plan, uh, you know, old age security, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, workers' compensation, you know, all sorts of things. And uh, uh, the ironic thing I found, you know, when when the government took me down and destroyed me and and took away my business and took away my livelihood, that I was literally left with nothing. Uh, I was unable to get uh, unemployment insurance because I was a business owner, and that's the way the laws are in Canada. Uh, I was unable to uh, to apply for uh, welfare because uh, uh, I had uh, a property that was in my name and uh, uh, various other factors and. Uh, yeah, it was it was it was it was really shocking. One of the other shocking things for me was that all during the apocalypse, and I, I refer to the pandemic as the apocalypse, and excuse me, people get offended at that. Uh, but all during the apocalypse, uh, all the government did uh, was tell us to defer, you know, the, defer your GST, defer, uh, you know, this payment, defer that payment. Uh, we're going to take away all your customers. So don't send us this money right now. You know what I mean? Hold on to it because you're going to need it. Well, by the time they shut me down, uh, you know, I was doing... Uh, Pre-pandemic, I was doing two and a half million dollars a year in, in revenue, uh, and then during the pandemic, I was still doing you know a sizable amount of revenue. I actually, have, I, I'm sure I was doing over a million dollars uh, during the, the the first year of uh, revenue. So by the time they shut me down, uh, I owed in GST close to one hundred and seventy five thousand uh, dollars. Plus, I also owed uh, SIBA loans. So SIBA loans were uh, these demand loans that the government of Canada gave you uh, because in order to stay in business. Well, I took out a demand loan with the government of Canada. I had been better off if I'd taken out that loan with the Hells Angels. Uh, at least they have scruples and morals. Uh, owing money to the CRA is like owing money to the mafia. 
Uh, they charge you an interest rate of 29%, which is the highest interest rate possible in Canada without being considered a loan shark. So by the time they shut me down, I owed a shitload of money. And, uh, you know, I, I've come to this realization. It's like, well, how, how am I even going to pay that money? How is it possible? Uh, in my business, you know, I would have been able to facilitate that debt. Uh, but now you take away my business and my revenue stream. I have zero chance of paying that money. Uh, and uh, it's only a matter of time until uh, CRA comes for, you know, whatever, uh, whatever it is that I have left. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's shocking to me uh, as a business owner, uh, uh, how high and dry you can be left. Uh, and uh, I was, I, you know, I was a bit naive to it. Speaking of the SIBA loan, uh, every single business, uh, well, every single restaurant in Canada took that loan out. It was $60,000 that they gave. And uh, they made it so that uh, you only had to pay back $40,000. Uh, and it's in the form of a demand loan. I'm not sure if you know what a demand loan is. Most loans are, let's say you took $60,000, you'd amortize it over 60 months and pay $1,000 a month. Uh, well, a demand loan is, you know, here's $60,000. You don't have to pay it back until January 1st of next year, unless, of course, we want it tomorrow. Then you have to pay it all back tomorrow. We were the only restaurant in Canada. OK, to pay back that loan, I'm going to well, I shouldn't say the only one. I'm guessing there was very, very few. Uh, but we were one of the few that pay back that loan. And the way that we paid it back is in order for us to get out of this financial shitstorm, we had to sell uh, a house that uh, myself and my business partner owned in the neighborhood that we operated in that he lived in. Uh, we owned that house for uh, 12 years. Uh, we had to sell that house uh, to survive this. And as soon as we sold that house, the government of Canada took that loan right off the top of it. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, whatever equity that we had was uh, would quickly disappeared.